red carpet right here. I have a question, guys. Are you ready for Jet Set Social? Absolutely. <laughs> Today, I'm here as a sponsor for the first annual Jet Set Social. And in just a little while, we are going to be talking about social media, the travel industry, how it affects I mean, honestly, in the click of a button today, you can say whether you like, dislike a hotel, a country, and really anything when you're on your adventure. So we're looking forward to hearing from these professionals. So this is Karen Jones with Anastasia's Africa, who's one of our sponsors tonight. Hi, Karen. Hi, Marianne. Welcome back. Yeah, thank you. Karen just sent us to Africa on the most amazing trip ever. It was life-changing, so thank you for that. You are so welcome. We are here with our very own Maxine Teitlunghari, Vanity Hi. Girl Hollywood. <laughs> Hi, guys. So I get to interview her for a change. Hi. Peggy, how are you? I'm just great. Thank you are you. like a jet set mama. You are on our <laughs> website all the time. You know, I just happen to get there a lot. That's all I can say. <laughs> so tell us what you brought to see tonight. We brought some traditional Thai musicians. Groundlink. Hello. How are you? Thank you for coming here to Jet Set Social. Yeah, I'm going to come back here. Glad we were able to help you uh, get your way over here. I know. So this was my driver here to Jet Set Social tonight. He got me here safe and sound. So tell me a little bit about Groundlink. Groundlink is the world's first global car service. We're available in all 50 states and 110 countries and 5,000 cities around the world. So you're saying that when my plane lands in, let's say, Thailand, maybe not Thailand specifically, Absolutely but... in Bangkok. We do, we do service there every week. Extraordinary vacations at exceptional prices. We partner with five-star luxury hotels around the world and can offer up to 65% off those luxury hotels. And it's not just the hotel room you're getting, you're getting experiences. The hotels work with Luxury Link to put together a suite of experiences. So flowers in the room, champagne upon arrival, um, private dinner with chef. It depends on each one and each one is hand uh, put together. Tell us about Orchid. Um, so Orchid, it's a boutique company. We represent um, privately owned properties worldwide, um, four and five star, all with a unique dining aspect, um, unique spa element. We are going to make our way to the red carpet. We're getting closer to the time where every some of the top travel professionals are going to be sharing their tips. We're going to learn about social media, how it affects the travel industry. So social media is just such a blossoming medium that you know everyone should take seriously. Well the Los Angeles Convention and Visitors Bureau is really one of the you know part of the heart and soul of Los Angeles. Um, we're really able to help journalists and others tell the stories of Los Angeles of our beautiful and dynamic city and of course you know we do everything else from like meetings to conventions to sales and marketing and work with all the hotels so we do the whole gamut and of course our Dine LA program is just so prolific. Tourism Malaysia is here at Jet Set Social and we have some viewers that are streaming live from around Hello, the world. <laughs> so what are some of the top things that you would recommend doing in Malaysia? Well actually Malaysia, Malaysia has a lot a lot of things to do so it's that everything under the sun experience in Malaysia so if you want to go diving we have like the top diving sites in the world if you want to go shopping there's a lot of places to go shopping um, ecotourism is really big so my name is Heather Collins I'm the marketing events manager with Think Products Think Thin and I'm here to give you your portable nutrition high protein zero sugar bar fabulous because I haven't eaten all day today <laughs> yeah. so 20 grams of protein will fill you right up and that zero sugar is, uh, is key, for, that way you won't have that hunger later. And it's great for travel because? Because you can take it anywhere, you can wear it on your neck. <laughs> but um, it's great for travel because it fills you up, it gives you that satiated feeling. A person who's never been to Africa goes to Africa, where should they go? Well, as far as I'm concerned, Africa is the kind of destination where you really need to get to know the people first, find out a little bit about them. Um, if they're into wine tasting and a little safari, maybe South Africa, I don't know. If you can see I'm pointing to a map there. Um, if they really just want the full-on African safari experience, probably Kenya, Tanzania. And if they want a little beach, maybe onto the Seychelles or Mozambique, Mauritius. So these are some of the top travel professionals in the world that are coming here to share their tips and what they recommend. So, Johnny. Johnny is a friend of mine. Johnny, every time I check, Johnny Jet is on a plane almost every day. Is it every day? Almost every day. <laughs> every three days. 
Yes. Now, Stacy is an expert when it comes to hotels. Hotels and resorts. Hotels and resorts. Okay, so Stacy, tell me, of all the places, hotels, that you've stayed at in the world, do you have a favorite? I would say any Orchid Resort and Escape Hotel, because that's part of what I do. <laughs> now, what brings you here to Jet Set Social this evening? Well, I'm on the panel. Uh, I'm with CTS Travel, and I oversee the or entire division that does all celebrity and VIP travel. Okay. So tonight is a night of celebrities in Los Angeles. Yes, yes. It's actually, ironically, a night that I almost kind of get off because of the fact that everybody's already where they need to be. But you decided to be here with us. Absolutely. Well, we can't thank you enough. And do you have a book coming out? I do. Uh, I do have a book coming out this summer, Celebrity Stays and Getaways. Lee is the youngest person to have been to every country in the world. That's what they tell me, yeah. So I know that this is a really hard question because I get this question and I haven't been even close to the amount of countries that you've been to. Let me guess. What's your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> yes. What is your favorite? Do you uh, have one? It's so hard to pick a favorite when you've been to so many places, but uh, I would say I love Australia, Namibia, Bolivia. Those are some of my favorites. This is the Travel Squire, correct? The Squire, yes. Now being a Travel Squire, what does that mean? Um, it means that um, we give advice and we write some great stories on TravelSquire.com. Now, what do you think is the best advice to give a novice traveler? Well, I think the advice that we try to give is all about validation. So, everybody thinks they know where they want to go, but then when they're ready to book, they go, where should I go? So, basically, we take their choices and we help them decide. We just want to tell you thank you for coming and talk to you a little bit about Jet Set Extra and the fact that we are an online travel resource for everyone. Basically, we bring you vacation in a box. So if you log on to Jet Set Extra, you're going to see fabulous video, fabulous images, and incredible art editorial written by some amazing award-winning writers, some amazing photography by professional photographers, and as you can see, we do some great things with video. So we invite you to come and join us and be part of Adventure in the World with Jet Set Extra. I would like to hand the mic over to Amy and she's going to start our panel. I know that everyone has read each of your bios, but personally I always like to know how people describe what they do so that the audience can get a sense of kind of the breadth of your blog or your agency or your site. Lee, do you want to start? Sure. Great. Um, I just kind of fell in love with travel. Uh, I went abroad when I was a junior in college. I'd never left the country before, and then uh, I just was hooked. And since then, I've traveled to every single country in the world, and uh, I'm uh, actually the youngest American to ever do that, so I'm very proud of that. That's impressive. Yeah. And you, you're, you are um, cataloging that on a blog. Yeah, yeah, leahbamonte.com, and I also contribute to a lot of different media outlets and uh, television. And what's your angle with when you travel to a country? Do you try to distill what the best things to do are, or how do you approach it? Uh, yeah, whatever there is to do in the country, whether it's go on a safari or climb a mountain or go to a beautiful beach or eat whatever there is to eat that's special to that country or, you know, drink a beer or a crazy alcohol or whatever it might be. I try to do... Nobody likes to do that. <laughs> Johnny Jet. After college, I started working at a college as a college recruiter. And everyone quit when I took the job, so I started getting all the best territories, usually just driving around. But I started getting Hawaii three times a year in 26 different states. And I just started learning all these different tricks on how you could fly up front or stay at a really nice hotel for cheap. And I started sharing it with all my friends, with emails, and I created a website. I got really lucky. The first Laura Bly from USA Today wrote about it in 2000, and that was my big break. Once she wrote about it, it went everywhere. My friends would call me up and say, turn on the TV right now. You're on CNBC's Power Lunch website of the day. I'm like, you're joking. People were asking me for interviews and TV, and now I have a TV show on the Travel Channel called Hotspots 2012. It airs next month. Okay. So your site focuses on sort of level jumping within the travel industry, getting more for your money. Well, I just want to show what's out there for everybody. So I just created a page that had everything, guidebooks, every single one, Farmers, Lonely Planet, Rick Steves, for uh, online travel agencies, Expedia, Orbitz, Travelocity, you name it. Great, Stacy. 
I worked at the Parker Meridian in New York for two years. Two years to the day, I got a phone call from the, the number two to Ian Schrager, and they were opening up a hotel in New York City, a new one. It's now called the Hudson Hotel. And they were looking for an associate director of sales. So I moved into that. I then opened up that hotel. I worked for Ian for four years. I launched his global sales office. So I ended up uh, starting my own group called Orchid Resorts and Escapes. And we represent four and five star boutique hotels all over the world that are independently and privately owned. But we mix in uh, a unique sense of a spa aspect and a food and beverage aspect to all of the hotels. So they hire you to do the sales and marketing for them because they're not part of a conglomerate? Exactly. We also help them with their social media side with, you know, the Facebook, Twitter, a small world, things like that. And of and course that. we'll talk about social media tonight Absolutely. as it's critical these days. Absolutely. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Jeff. Well, um, I started out in the world of fashion and magazines, um, and I went to school for Syracuse University for uh, journalism, and never really did that. I fell into advertising. So I did that for about 15 years, and um, worked at Connie Nast for years. I worked at Connie Nast Traveler, and I worked at Vogue and GQ. And um, being on the advertising side is kind of interesting because you learn about the business and I wanted to get into internet and I felt that internet was a place to be for travel going forward and that's how I created Travel Squire five years ago. Digital is really important now for travel. Great. Ashley. Hello. Um, I'm Ashley Colburn and I guess I can say that my travel itch sort of like Lee began when I studied abroad in Spain. And I actually, so I'm a TV host and producer. I'm from San Diego, so I moved back to San Diego and got hired as a host and producer at Wealth TV. And after hosting a variety of shows there from yachts and jets and cars, fashion, um, I, they were like, well, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to travel. So uh, the first show that I went to do was in Croatia. So I kind of just tried to show an inside look of the countries and hoped that people, when they watched my show, felt like they could go and do those same things. Nothing was too over the top, but um, it was easy enough to follow my adventure and I hoped that they would have a similar adventure when they went abroad. I decided that the 30 minute travel shows weren't really for me in the fact that I was learning so much as an individual being there and as a traveler that I wanted to do the destinations more justice and, and give and really have a viewer watch a show and understand that country and the culture and of course find that adventure along the way. Everybody has such a fun job. <laughs> <laughs> Can't complain. James. Hi, my name is James Densmore and I am a part of CTS Travel. And the division I run for CTS Travel is we do all celebrity and VIP travel. And I have a website, go to travelguy.com. How I got into this industry uh, was I was around 20 years of age and I took an Iberia Airlines flight from JFK to Madrid. And <clears throat> I had never flown international and I, from this point forward, thought that all travel international was gonna be like this flight because when the plane took off and the fastest seatbelt sign went off, which was only about five seconds into flight, uh, the entire plane got up and everybody was drinking and eating and smoking all over the plane. And I had never seen anything like that in my entire life, <laughs> where if you were sitting down, you were actually the odd person out. Uh, and when the plane landed in Madrid, everybody cheered and clapped. And I thought that all travel must be like this then because I had never seen this in the US, but it really gave me that taste of what the rest of the world was like and how excited people were to either go back to their native country or to be going somewhere new. My first job, believe it or not, was working in the travel department at the World Bank International Monetary Fund, which is a part of the United Nations. So I was really kind of thrown into diplomatic travel pretty quickly. And I ended up out in LA and kind of spun that and went with it more with celebrities. 
And <clears throat> now I probably have about so like half of like the top 10 celebrity names. How do you think the digital age has affected travel since there's so For much sure. transparency now and you can know so much before you even call a travel right. agent? Yeah, in the old days, you had to call a travel agent or you had to have a stack of newspaper clippings from you know, the travel section or every single National Geographic magazine. I mean, I have friends who still have magazines and they go through them to find the research. I'm like, man, you're like Fred Flintstone. Yeah. <laughs> it's old I think kind of what, what, what he was saying is that's why I think blogs are so important these days because that's how you get a real sense uh, because you're not getting it from a random person like you might on TripAdvisor or some of these other review sites. You're getting it from a person. You can actually email them if you want, get a recommendation. I mean, I haven't talked to a travel agent since 1998, since I first started traveling. How do you feel about online content producers, those of you who are not online content producers? Do you see them as a partner or a resource? I think there's great useful to tools. Obviously, I use those tools all the time when I need to tell a client about something. So I'm obviously copying and pasting those links and those blogs and everything to send off to them to read about. So I think there's a, a huge demand, and I think that the information out there is getting better and better. It's a tool that we can't do our jobs now without it. And so it's not no. going to go anywhere. No. I think it takes time to trust people. I think you have to start following them. And you know, I, I just don't think you go to a barber just because you're walking by. Mm -hmm. You're going to get a referral from a friend or a family member, and it, it's the trust thing. I think it's basically the same way. If someone's you know, tweeting, probably all of my hotels right now, unless you have 5,000 to 10,000 followers, you're probably not going to be asked to come. We're all relying on you as a filter. So it can't just be all unicorns and roses. The most important Sorry. thing is to be honest. Mm -hmm. You know, the good hotels and the good PR people, they, they appreciate the feedback mm -hmm. because it's actually having like a free consultant come in. And that's your reputation right there. Jeff, do you go back to the de destination and show metrics with this is how many people tweeted about it or this is how many people read it? Well, it depends if we're, we're going back and asking for something else. I mean, we do, we, we send them the articles when, when they're posted, but we don't necessarily, unless, unless an article is out of, out, out of the charts, um, we'll just say, by the way, did you know this article got 20,000, you know, hits on it? I, it's, it's something extra that I'm doing because, like I said, we're, we're multimedia journalists, so I can actually take my flip cam and do a tour in my room right then and there and then post that on Facebook and no, that's not what my show is going to look like at all, nor is it in high definition or 3D, but it is something that the, you know, my followers and the people that do look up to me as a travel expert, uh, that they can um, put themselves in that situation and see what they would get if they were to do that as well. So. I mean, it's great, and, and every, the cool thing is, is everybody, well, not everybody, but a lot of people have smartphones, and within the click of a button, no matter where you are in the world, whether you have a Wi-Fi connection or you bought your global plan, you can, you know, we are all around the world tweeting and writing where we are on Facebook and, and saying what we like or dislike. Well, everybody has been fascinating, such good tips, great information, really appreciate the point of view that everybody brought on a topic that's really changing all the time. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Jet Set Extra, for hosting this incredible conversation.